Hey there. In this video, we are going to look at whether or not order matters when transformations are combined. We're going to apply pairs of transformations in two different orders and then compare the graphs that result. So as I said, we're looking at whether or not the order matters when we combine transformations. And to investigate this, we're going to apply pairs of transformations in two different orders and then compare the results that we get. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at two transformations that are in different directions. And then second, we're going to look at combining a couple of expansions, compressions, reflections in the same direction. And then third, we're going to look at combining an expansion, compression, reflection with a translation in the same direction. So first of all, we'll do this. We're going to do a horizontal reflection and a vertical expansion by a factor of two. There's our function, and so we'll do it first in the order that was shown on that page, as in we're first going to do the horizontal reflection, and you get that, right, reflected across the y-axis, and you achieve that by replacing the x with negative x, and all the x values have to change sign, and then afterwards we'll do the vertical expansion, and you get that function there, and we achieve that by taking this that we reflected, and then multiplying it by 2, in order to get all of the y values to be twice as much. And so that's where that graph ends up. Now we'll do it the other way. So this means, first of all, we'll do the vertical expansion. So that goes to there. And so we have f of x. We multiply that function by 2, and we get 2f of x. And then if we reflect that over there, we get 2f of negative x. And we achieve that by replacing the x inside there with negative x. And if you remember, that's actually the same graph as that. Those are identical. Same place. All right? You get this same equation. So there's those graphs. And we'll just confirm how we got those equations to be the same both ways. Right? In both cases, you're starting with y equals f of x y equals f of x. But in the first case, you're first going to replace that x with negative x. And so we have f of negative x. Whereas in the second case here, you're changing this to 2 times f of x first. And then in the first case, now we take this function and multiply it by 2. So 2 times f of negative x. And then in this case, now we replace that inside their x with negative x and we end up with 2f of negative x in both cases. And if you think about it, one of the changes is inside, right? x becomes negative x, and one of the changes is outside. You're multiplying it by 2. So if one change is inside, one change is outside, it really doesn't matter which way you do it. One changes to the x values, one changes to the y values, and it doesn't make a difference. Let's look at the second one. In our second one, we're looking at expansions, compressions, reflections in the same direction. And we're going to do a horizontal expansion by a factor of 2 and a horizontal reflection in both orders and see what we get. So there's our function again. And first, we'll do it in the order that it was on that page. So first, we'll do a horizontal expansion by a factor of 2. And to get that to happen, you have to change x to 1 half x. Remember, changes to x horizontally are the opposite. So you want it to expand. you got to multiply inside x by a number smaller than 1. And then after that, if we are going to apply our reflection, we reflect it over there across the y-axis. And so in that case, the x gets changed to negative x. So you have a half times negative x. A half times negative x is the same as negative a half x. Now we'll do it in the other order. So that means, first of all, we're doing a reflection. So we reflect it across there. We get that to happen by, again, changing the x to negative x. And then we do our expansion from there. So all the x values get doubled. And we take this and we replace this x with a half x, and we end up with that. And again, if you remember correctly here, what we had first was the same as that. Same place and same equation there. So there's those graphs again, all together on one. And we'll just again confirm that we get the same equation both ways there. So again, we're starting y equals f of x both times. 
And we're making changes to x both times. So in this first one here, the x gets replaced with 1 half x. And in the second case here, we're doing the reflection first. So this x gets changed to minus x. And then after that, we do the other thing. So in the first case here, we're going to take this x right here and replace it with negative x. So I'll even show it in a different color here. And we'll even put some brackets around it here and then put some other brackets around here and that one half there. So basically we turned this x into this and then I gotta have my f out in front. But if you think about it again, a half times negative x as I mentioned before, a half times negative x is just negative one half x. That's the simplest way to write it. So that function ends up like that. And then over here, if we take this x and replace it with a half x like that, then we still have that negative there and all of that. And of course, that's just negative a half x. So you get the same equation both times, same graph both times. Let's look at the third case here. So in this case, we're combining an expansion, compression, and reflection with a translation in the same direction. And specifically, we're going to do a horizontal compression by a factor of a half and a horizontal translation of three to the right in both orders. And so let's go to the graph. And again, first we'll do it in the order that it was shown. So we're first going to do our horizontal compression and we get that, right? All of the X values get cut in half and we achieve that by changing that X to two X. And then we're going to do our horizontal translation of three to the right. So it's going to end up there. So it goes one, two, three to the right, and it ends up there. So it's skinnier and it's moved off to the right. And we achieve that by taking this X and replacing it with X minus three. And when you replace it with X minus three after that two is already there, it's two times this entire X. So it's gotta be two times this entire thing. That has to be put in there with brackets like that, right? Now we'll do it in the other order which means first of all, we're gonna do our horizontal translation of three to the right. So we shifted this one, two, three units to the right. And we get that to happen by changing X to X minus three. And now we're going to do our horizontal compression and we achieve that by changing this X to two X. And when you do that, you get that graph right there. That X turns to two X. Now, if you remember though, that is actually in a different spot. If you see that, those two graphs there are in a different spot. And if you look at the equations, the equations are different. One of them has this expression x minus three in brackets, the one where that happened second, and one of them doesn't have it in brackets, the one where the shift happened first. So in this case, the order does matter. And there's those two graphs again. The final graph ends up in a different spot each time and the equation ends up different. And we'll just confirm here how we got those equations. So in both cases, we started with y equals f of x. And the first case we did the compression first. So we changed x to 2x here. But in the other case, we did the translation three to the right first. And so we changed this to x minus three. And then in the first case, we then did the translation. So we changed that to X minus three. But since it's replacing this single X with something with two terms, we got to make sure we put some brackets around that like that. And then got to have our two here. And I'm going to make these square brackets just to emphasize the difference. You can put round brackets in both cases if you want, but it can be like that. Again, that X turned into that X minus three. But in the second case here, we're gonna turn this X into two X. But since we have a single term and a single term, we don't need any brackets there around that two X. You could put them if you want to, but it's not gonna change anything if there was brackets around that. And then we of course have this here. Now, the algebra you've done in the past, I'm sure tells you, you know that and that are different expressions. They don't have the same value and the graph is not the same. All right. So in this case, does the order matter? In this case, it's a definite yes. 
Now, in the interest of time here, I just did one combination of a compression and a translation, but you could pick any one of those and combine it with a translation in the same direction, and you'd find the same results that the order does matter. Whereas back here, when we had combinations of these, now again, I just did one example of an expansion with a reflection, but you could combine any pair of those and you'd find the order does not matter. And the same thing here, we saw when it's in two different directions, the order does not matter. Now, if you're wondering why the order matters sometimes and other times it doesn't, as we saw before here, when you have transformations in different directions, they affect different coordinates. You have one that affects X and one that affects Y, so it doesn't matter what order you do that in. And when you have them in the same direction, but they're all this kind of thing, they're all expansions, compressions, and reflections. All of these are a multiplication or division type of things. You're multiplying or dividing the values. You're multiplying by a half, or you're multiplying by negative one really is what that does. And when you multiply things, it doesn't matter what order you multiply them in, right? If you multiply by a half and then multiply by negative one, or you multiply by negative one, then multiply by a half, that doesn't make a difference because it doesn't matter what order you multiply things in. Whereas in this third case, an expansion, compression, reflection, which is a multiplication or division thing, and a translation, which is an addition or subtraction thing, you learned a long time ago that the order that you do those things in matter. There's a certain order of operations, and that the reason is because you get a different thing when you do them in different orders here. Whether you do the addition type thing first, or you do the multiplication type thing first, that's going to affect what you come up with in the end. Let's look at one more example here to further see what's going on. In this situation, we're going to work with this function here. y equals f of 2x minus 6, and how can you get that from f of x? So if we think about this here, we could work with this as is. So perform the transformations that look like has happened here, but do it in the right order so we arrive at this function. So if we start with y equals f of x here, the transformation I have to do first to get this function is I'm going to have to do the, the shift. I'm going to have to replace that x with x minus 6. So this was our horizontal translation, 6 to the right. So that was changing that x to x minus 6. And then we can make the change of this x to 2x here, and we get the equation that we have over there, right? Like that. And so then that's our horizontal compression by a half, right? So if we do those two things in that order, we arrive at this. So that's one way you can do this. Our second method here is to put it into what most people consider sort of a standard form when you're talking about transformations. So if we take this and write it in an algebraically equivalent form of y equals f of, and that expression inside there, the 2x minus 6 we're going to write as 2 bracket x minus 3, because that is algebraically the same, right? This expression in there is the same as this expression in here. And if you want to, you can put, as I said, square brackets outside of this. If you want to make them different, just to emphasize what's going on, but that doesn't matter. It means the same thing either way. And so if we want to get that equation, this standard form equation, which is equivalent, we're going to start with y equals f of x, and we're going to make some changes to that. So if we want this to happen, here, first we have to replace x with 2x, right? This x turns into 2x, and then, of course, we have the rest of it here. And then after that, we are going to replace this x with x minus 3. And we got to put brackets again because we're replacing something with one term with something that has two terms on it there. And then this, we'll use our square brackets again here and our function there. All right. And so what that represents is first doing a horizontal compression by a half and then afterwards doing a horizontal translation of three to the right. Now you might be saying, how can these things be equivalent? How can that and that be equivalent when they look different and they have that one has a three, one has a six. Well, if you first do a shift of six to the right, 
but then you compress it, you're also compressing the shift. So shifting first six, but then compressing is the same as shifting three to the right afterwards. Shifting six before you cut it in half is like shifting three after you cut it in half. That's why those are equivalent. You can see that just by confirming with a point here. So this point, 1224, we can see what happens in both cases here. So we can perform these transformations, then we can perform these transformations and just confirm the two results here. So if we start with our 1224 and we do these things, so first we're gonna go six to the right. Six to the right is gonna make that 1824. And then if we do our horizontal compression, the X value gets cut in half, so it becomes 924. And now we'll do it this way around here. So again, we'll start with exactly the same point, 1224. And we will, first of all, do our horizontal compression, which takes the 12 to six and then 24. And then if we do our horizontal translation of three to the right, the six slides over to nine, 24. And you see, that's the same point in either case. You could pick any other point and you'd find that you get the same thing both ways. So even though the transformations that these two things represent are different, the equations are algebraically equivalent to each other and therefore the results you get are the same in each case. Now what lots of people do is they tend to put things into this standard form where this expression is factored and then they just know that the translations come last, right? You can always work it out by looking at how you get the replacements to happen to get there. But lots of people find it easier to just think, okay, I got to put it into this standard form where it's the inside expression is factored like that and then I can just do the translations last. Let's summarize this right now. So when you combine transformations, we've seen that the order that the transformations are applied sometimes makes a difference to the final resulting graph. And when two transformations in different directions are combined, then the order does not matter, regardless of the types of transformations, right? Because one's vertical, one's horizontal. When you combine compressions, expansions, reflections all together that are in the same direction, then the order does not matter either because they're all based on multiplication or division and multiplication and division, it doesn't matter what order you put them in, you get the same thing, right? Those two operations don't matter what order you do them in. And then third, if you combine one of these things, compression, expansion, reflection, combined with a translation in the same direction, then the order does matter. And that's because, as we said up above there, those things are multiplication and division things. I'll abbreviate it this time. Multiplication and divisions, while translations are based on addition and subtraction, right? So that, as you've seen, again, in all your work in past mathematics, doing those things in different orders matters. So in that case, when you combine those transformations, it does make a difference. And then just last year, a note about this. I had said that if you put things in this standard form where that expression inside there is factored, then that represents doing transformations in this order. First doing all of those things and then doing the translations last after you do all of those things. And again, standard form is when those things are in factored form inside the brackets, inside the function. All right, that's it. Mm -hmm.